In this video, we're going to be taking a look at five free body diagrams to talk about some concepts, length of vectors, and the location of the vectors to accurately draw free body diagrams in a bunch of different scenarios. So we have a few different forces we're going to consider. We have the force of gravity on all objects pulling straight down from the earth. We have the force of tension from any string or rope like materials. We have the normal force, which is a perpendicular support force. We have the two types of friction, kinetic friction for something that's sliding and static friction for something that's trying to slide. And then we also have an applied force. I'll squeeze that up there. That's usually just some kind of general force. That's a push or a pull from something or someone that isn't a force of tension. Okay, so we're going to be picking out of those six forces and oftentimes a free body diagram could be drawn with just a single point and all the vectors drawn out of it. In these ones, I'm just going to draw all of the vectors on my actual box or object that we're focusing on. So my first one, we have a box over here. We have two strings attached, so they're both being pulled at the angle that they are attached to the box at. And we have two forces of tension. Both of them are pulling on an angle, which means they have a vertical upward component and then also a bit of a horizontal component. Those components you wouldn't include in the diagram, but you would use in a net force formula. And then we also have the force of gravity, which I'll draw right in the middle of my object, pulling straight down. And that concludes the vectors for my first one. Now for more, my second diagram, we have something pushed and slides at a constant velocity. So we have an applied force going on um, by the person because it's some sort of push or pull, not by a string like material. But let me go ahead and put the force of gravity first because that one I know is for sure there. And then for the applied force, sometimes you can draw all the forces out of the center of the object. For my diagram, I'll put it where the force is occurring and then I'll call the FA to the right because it's a push from the person. And then since the box is sitting on a surface, we have the normal force pushing up perpendicular from the surface to support the weight of the object. And then because the thing is sliding at a constant velocity, anything that slides, there is an opposition to the slide, which we'll call FFK because the object is actually sliding. Now, it's not really necessary um, to mark these things in the diagram, but just for your own reference, the normal force and force of gravity are the same value in opposite directions because there's no vertical movement or acceleration. And then the FA and the FFK should be equal length vectors because it's moving at a constant velocity, which means that there's no acceleration. That means the horizontal forces are balanced as well. All right, moving on to our next one, we're starting to get into some slightly trickier cases here. We have a book pushed against a wall and held at rest. So again, we have an applied force to the left by the person. And we can go ahead and put our FG straight down as we usually do. And for this one, it's being pushed against a surface and that surface is going to push back perpendicular this direction so normally the normal force is upwards but since it's being pushed against the wall the wall supporting it and pushing to the right and then as you can see the vertical forces aren't balanced we have fg but if the object is at rest there must be a vertical force pushing or pulling upwards and that is actually the force of static friction which is um, somewhat of a rare case having static friction push up but since the object has a tendency to try to slide down the wall, the force of friction is going to be pushing up away from that. So anytime you have something at rest, you want to make sure you kind of eyeball your vectors and make sure everything is sort of being canceled out to keep that object static and at rest. So and again, in this case, our vertical forces are going to be the same length and the same value, and then our horizontal ones are going to be the same length and the same value. Now moving on to some things on some inclines and declines, we have a sled accelerating up the hill. So we still have the FG always perfectly straight down. That is not angled, but it does have a perpendicular and parallel component 
Again, you wouldn't include that in your diagram. You would just include that in a net force equation. In this case, perpendicular is up on an angle like this to create that 90 degree angle with the surface. And that's supporting the sled. And it looks like we have some kind of rope attached here. So we have some force of tension going up along this rope, making it go up the hill. So because it's accelerating up the hill, we know that there's got to be an imbalance of force and the FT has to be larger than the other parallel forces that are counteracting it. So we will for sure have some force of kinetic friction opposing the slide. And the other thing that would be opposing the slide would actually be this parallel component of the FG, but that FT would definitely have to be greater to cause that acceleration up the hill. And our final one, we have something that is rolling down the ramp. Now, if it were really slippery, it would have a like tendency to slide down this way. And if static friction is catching it and allowing it to rotate, then static friction would be opposing that slide and catching it and then causing it to rotate over this way. Okay, This isn't one of my force vectors. That's just the way that it's rotating for your reference. And then, of course, we have FG straight down as we normally do and we have a perpendicular support force right over here our normal force and let's actually go ahead and get rid of this little line over here so it doesn't get too cluttered so then we have our normal force so oh, already labeled the normal force but we have our normal force perpendicular up from the surface slightly angled and then just along with our FFS and our FG. So in all these cases, we're clearly neglecting air resistance. It's usually not very significant in a lot of cases like this. So unless a specific scenario tells you to include air resistance or drag, we typically won't include that. So just to recap, we have an applied force from someone or something that's pushing or pulling it that isn't tension. We have the force of gravity pulling everything straight down from the earth. We have the force of tension that is always some sort of pull from a rope-like material. The normal force that pushes out perpendicular from the surface, which could be something that is flat and has been F and pointing straight up, which is the most typical case, but it can also be angled as seen in the second two um, problems or the last two problems, excuse me. And then in rare cases, such as this book against the wall, we have the F end pushing to the right to make sure we keep that force perpendicular outward from the surface. And then if something is sliding or trying to slide, then we would have kinetic or static friction. So I hope that was helpful in helping you go through these five free body diagrams. Thank you for watching and listening.